Hey, Leafy Leaf here, and today I'm going to talk about polyhedrons. And at the end, I'm going to be explaining why there are only five platonic solids. Today I'm going to talk about polyhedron. Now, to start off, what is a polyhedron? A polyhedron is a solid where every face is made out of a polygon. An example of a polyhedron would be a cube. Although the more uh, correct name would be a hexahedron. This simply means that it has six sides because of hexa and that it's a solid, indicating hedron. If this was a polygon, it'd be called hexagon. However, it's not a hexagon, it's a hexahedron. And, and the sides are not made out of hexagons either because polyhedrons are not the same as polygons, even though they're made of them. As an example, a tetrahedron is a four-faced salt, but it is not made out of cubes. It is made out of triangles, so there's a tetrahedron. This can also be used as a four-sided die. these two shapes as platonic solids, and later in the video I'll be explaining why there are only five of them. But of course there are other polyhedrons. For example, this badly drawn square pyramid is a polyhedron. Every side is a There are four triangular sides, and of course the one square base at the bottom. Another very popular shape is the icosahedron, which I'm not going to draw because it's very hard to render in a two-dimensional space. Um, but think of it as a 20-sided die. And it is also a platonic solid. And of course, there are an infinite number of polyhedrons. So I could keep listing them forever. Now, I did mention earlier in this video that about platonic solids. And basically, what a platonic solid is, is a polyhedron where... Every vertice has the same amount of sides connecting to it. In the case of the tetrahedron, that number would be 3. In the case of the cube, the number is actually also 3. In the case of the octahedron, that number is 4. In the case of the uh, dodecahedron, that number actually drops back down to 3. And in the case Finally, in the case of the icosahedron, that number is at 5, because 5 triangles intersect at every vertice for the icosahedron. But this isn't enough for a polyhedron to be a platonic solid. A platonic solid must also have all congruent faces for the tetrahedron, that's a triangle. For the cube, that's a square. For the octahedron, that's a triangle again. For the dodecahedron, it's actually a pentagon. And for the icosahedron, it's again a triangle. So these two rules, uh, each vertice must have the same amount of sides connected to it, and each face must be congruent, is enough to limit the number of platonic solids to five. And these five are, as I mentioned many times before, tetrahedron, cube, octahedron, dodecahedron, and icosahedron. Now, 
these different uh, polyhedrons are split into two categories. There are the convex and the concave polyhedrons. Every polyhedron fits in one of these categories. Convex polyhedrons include the Q, the uh, tetrahedron, and also the pyramid. Some, and well, concave ones are a bit harder to draw. A nice example would be a Q with a tetragonical shaped hole in the middle where another te tetrahedron is placed. As shown here. It's, its description is a lot more complicated than it actually is. Basically, it's just stacking a tetrahedron on top of a cube, and you get a concave shape. The definition of convex is any two points within the shape a line draw between them will be in, within the shape. And it's the opposite for concave. As an example, you can have a dot here and a dot here, and that line will fare outside of the shape. It's interesting to note that all platonic solids belong in the convex group. None of them are concave. Now I'm going to address the question that I promised at the beginning of the video. Um, the question that I promised to address, why are there only five platonic solids? So to solve this problem, first I want to imagine, you'd imagine every uh, polyhedron as a net, as it will help us visualize the situation on a two-dimensional board. So let's take a look at the cube net. So you'll notice there are six different sections of the cube net, and each section represents one face of the cube. So some other things you might notice is every single point on the net has at least three vertices. Except for these, but that's because they wrap around over here, and eventually we'll have three vertices. This means that in every polyhedron, every single edge will have three, at least three vertices. You'll see why this is important later on. So, our, the second thing I want to bring to mention is that if you have a collection of shapes in the net that add up to 360 degrees, you may notice that this can never fold up into a larger thought solid. As an example, this piece of paper right here, if we were to try to fold up this part into a solid, it's not going to fold. Because you would have to fold this side, and the other two sides would have to be the wall. And you can try as many times as you want at home. Take, just take my word for it, it's not going to work. So now that you have these two systems in mind, that Every vertex, <clears throat> that every vertex must have at least three edges. And that any angle must be less than 360 degrees. You can prove why there can only be five platonic solids. So, as a starter, you may notice that the only three shapes you can use to create platonic solids, because remember, every side has to be congruent, are triangles, squares, and pentagons. Here's a simple proof. Let's take the next highest, uh, next lowest sided shape, a hexagon. 
Each side of it is 120 degrees. Now, if you place three, remember, the minimum of edges, then you will get a 360 degree circle, something that we're actually not allowed to get, as shown here. So, hexagons cannot be used to construct platonic solids. Only pentagons, squares, and triangles can. Now, let's start with the three different ways you can construct triangles to create a platonic solid. So, triangles have a 60 degree. Um, hmm. Triangles have a 60 degree uh, angle to work with here. Now, the number 60 luckily can be multiplied by 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 without reaching 360 degrees. So, 1 and 2 are not allowed because of the at least three edges, uh, at least three edges connecting to each ver vertex rule. But three, four, and five each create their own platonic solid. Three creates the tetrahedron. Four creates the octahedron. And five creates the icosahedron. Something that I'm not going to draw because, again, it's hard to render in a 2D plane. But triangles are not the only shape that work. Squares and pentagons do. Unfortunately, the number 90 only can be multiplied by 1, 2, or 3 before it reaches 360. Which means, since 1 or 2 are off limits, the only shape that a square can make into a... Um, platonic solid is the cube. And finally, the <clears throat> and finally the pentagon. The pentagon again can only be broken into one other shape. And this is the dodecahedron. These are the five platonic solids. No other shapes will work. We've already ran through all of the different shapes and the amount of edges connecting to each vertex there can be. So this is the answer to why there are only five platonic solids. And more specifically, there are three platonic solids that use triangles. There's one platonic solid that uses squares. And there's one platonic solid that uses pentagons.